conducting this sessions of series on GST real estate uh, uh, month over month. And uh, it's an opportunity to be here and especially uh, stage uh, being shared with Rajesh sir who can share more views on litigation. Uh, today we will be discussing on very big fundamentals basics of uh, GST to the landowner and developer in an area sharing project. And uh, I invite uh, Rajesh sir to share some of the views uh, on the taxation aspect where sir will be talking you to you on the uh, legal point of view and i will walk you through with uh, some numbers and examples as to how this taxation works uh, rajesh sir uh, over to you uh thank you venu uh, and also thanks tera uh, consultants private limited and uh, other associate organization for giving us this opportunity of continuously uh, you know, sharing our thoughts and uh, knowledge at the same time in the process, we also learn a lot. Uh, I think the coverage uh, was briefly mentioned by Vishwas in his uh, talk. Uh, basically, we would like to run through some of the uh, aspects as to the taxability from the landowner aspect actually to be paid by the developer vis-a-vis the liability uh, on the developer in a scenario where the project is that of a joint development agreement or arrangement with AIH. So that is what is the topic of the day. We, I would like to run through some of the legal propositions and then the valuation uh, it's a basically an area sharing of a JDA uh, in an RREP, that is a residential real estate project. I think this picture picture is the fundamental or a basic for us to understand the overall transactions involved in this uh, discussion. See, uh, this particular arrangement of a joint development agreement or a arrangement is a single arrangement or a transaction involving multiple supplies. So though from the persons who are dealing with, it is a one single composite arrangement, but when look at it from the different perspective of the taxation, there are different, different aspects involved. The first of it, out of this, if we see, I think Veno is uh, picturely mentioning it. There is a first transaction set to have been there. I'm using the word set to have been there because generally in a common understanding, we do not recognize this. We do not identify this. But as a person, as a professional, as a person who is in the business, who is required to comply with the GST law in the context of the real estate agents, real estate businesses, should understand that there is a concept of transfer of development right from the landowner to the developer. What exactly is this development right? Uh, generally, when we speak about this development right, they also coupled with the word transfer of it gets generally confused with transferable development. The transferable development right TDRs are little different, wherein the, it is gen, it is issued by government or the local authority, where they acquire some uh, some of your land, and in exchange of which they give you this transferable development right, which can be used to build an additional FSI. So I think that is a different thing. We are not talking about that over here. What we are effectively talking about, talking over here, is a concept of a right which is being given by the person who owns the land in favor of the developer. Say, I am the landowner. I have, uh, being a owner of the land, I possess various rights attached to that. It may be a, I do have a right to lease that land. I have a right to, you know, sell that land, including all the rights in it. I have a right to construct something on it. I have a right to 
dig it and explore something inside it. So like that, wages rights attached to that land are being owned by the landowner. One such right is the right to develop any building on that particular land. That particular right to develop that land further is understood to be a development right. It is once I enter into joint development agreement, it is uh, the understanding of the government uh, that I am giving or transferring that right to develop on that particular land in favor of the developer, where yes. developer is free to enter over there and develop that particular property into a bigger building or apartment, whatever it is. So that particular transfer of right is said to be a supply and that supply is independent of other type of supplies which uh, you know, developers can go or some other in the entire transaction which may involve. But what is being spoken here as a first thing is a transfer of the development right by the landowner to the developer. And to be levied under GST, there should be a supply of goods or services for a consideration in the course of furtherance of business. So we are not getting too much into it. Uh, we are basically, what in exchange I am get, getting from a developer uh, in exchange for me giving out the development rights, the construction services, which is set out in the picture as number two, that is the supply B. Supply A is a development, right? Supply B is a construction services. So effectively, there's a mutual, the barter between A, lander and developer for one against the other, which is development right as against construction or construction services as against development right. So this is the first aspect of our levy, which we will be discussing. So uh, I think we know, uh, the further things you can just explain the valuation and other things. Then again, I'll come back to the next aspect of uh, taxability. Right. So uh, with the respect of the development right, as Rajesh rightly said, that, that it is not transfer of the TDR certificate, which is transferable development right, where, which comes from that. But this is a transfer of the development right in the land. So we are not talking about certificates. So the landowner is now giving supply A to the developer. Please note, this is a taxable transaction and the taxable in the hands of the recipient. Here, the recipient of the service, supplier of the service is the landowner. Recipient of the service is the developer. So the developer who is the recipient of service he is expected to pay this tax under reverse charge. At what rate? At the rate of 18%, 9972 HSM. Valuation, whatever is the value of the similar units, will come in detail. And there is some exemption. So it is not an exemption in the hands of the landowner. Please note, it is a reverse charge given to the builder. Builder has been given some exemption by a Entry 41A of 12 oblique 2017, which we will again look into detail. It is a taxable levy. So that is why you can see the entry of it in 11 oblique 2017 that this is a levy which is taxable and taxable at the rate of 18%. So development right is one supply which is taxable. So let's look at the value. So the basic of is what is development right? It is a right which is given. How is it valued? The value is, it is set, the value of the service which is given by way of transfer of development right by the landowner to the builder promoter against the consideration in the form of residential commercial apartments would be deemed to be equal to the value of the apartments. So if the landowner in an area sharing, let's say the landowner has got 40 units, each unit, let's say 1-1 one, one crore, so value of the development right is 40 crores. The value of development right is 40 crores. That is how the valuation of the development right has to be done. Now, the unsold units on OC is also to be considered because there is an exemption given. To the extent of the sold units, it is exempt. It is taxable to the extent of the unsold units. 
how is that given it is given by way of a conditional exemption so the government has said whatever is the gst payable on the development rate what is the gst payable on development rate the value of supply is the 40 crores and the gst payable on that is 18 percent of the 40 crores so the government has given an exemption saying that the 80 percent of this the 80 percent of this uh, uh, so 18 percent of the 40 crores which is the what you will be paying here on gst on the development right i am not going to tax whole of this i am going to give you some exemption so whatever this G development right is, is split into the ratio of the residential apartment and the carpet area of the commercial apartments, subject to a condition that the developer pays under RCM. So residential has been given blanket exemption. The residential area of it has been given blanket exemption. Please note. The commercial portion, there is no exemption. The exemption is given only to the residential portion and not the commercial portion. Further to this, they have said, they have further to this, they have said, that this is the exemption which is given for in terms of the development rate itself. This is further the computed, it, the way it is computed is the carpet area of unbooked as on the date of OC divided by total carpet area. So imagine there is a development rate of 100. If in the project there is commercial and residential, portion of commercial is not exempt, portion of residential is only exempt. But this portion of residential which is exempt is coming with a condition. So there is a condition for that exemption. For me to claim this exemption, I have to pay tax. What is the tax that I have to pay? The GST on this TDR applicable is exempted only to the units which have been sold. So the GST on this to the extent of unbooked divided by total carpet area of residential, please note total carpet of residential area is what the builder is expected to be paying. So the builder has to pay the TDR on the unsold carpet area. However, they have given one more relaxation subject to a maximum. If my regularly, if I would have sold, I would have ended up paying tax at the rate of 5% or 1%. So whichever is lower, my liability, which I'm paying on the development right is subject to the maximum of this unsold apartment. For those of you who are listening for the first time, still it might be looking some confusion. We have a practical illustration to be taken. We'll take at that point. Looking at the next aspect, which is taxation of supply B, which is construction services provided in the whole of this diagram, we are looking at the second aspect. The developer has provided the construction services to the landowner. So the taxation of the construction services by the developer to the landowner. So in lieu of giving the development, right, the developer has constructed the apartments and handed over to the landowner. Uh, Raja sir, anything you would like to say here, since it is a, again a barter uh, from the legal point? or yeah. you want... uh, See, in either of that, you know, the first scenario or a second scenario, uh, these notification uh, as far as the, is uh, giving a valuation mechanism. Technically, there may be a lot of arguments to say that, uh, uh, you know, I am... Uh, why should I go with the valuation mechanism set out in the notification? Why can't I go with the general valuation provision is uh, a question which comes up. It is uh, legally yet to be decided whether the prescription given through a notification is a valid prescription of a valuation mechanism is something which is a subject matter of a dispute which has to go and settle before Supreme Court quite a long time. So anybody who is taking any view different than the methodology of valuation set out in these notifications would generally get into a litigation and a dispute. So it is the call of the management of the entities who are uh, dealing with this, whether to take up a litigation or not. And if so, what is the amount for which they're taking up a litigation? 
they should be clear in their mind. Unnecessarily taking a litigation would uh, have a cost and uncertainty, which would unnecessarily hamper the business and in fact sometimes even impact the uh, concept of going concern of the entity itself because the stakes would be too huge. So looking at that, how to uh, whether they need to go with this valuation mechanism or not is a choice of that particular entity because certainly uh, there is no uh, certain I mean uh, clear clarity as to what is to be done. So my suggestion would be, uh, to follow what is set out in the notification if you do not want to take up a litigation. However, if you want to contest it, you can deviate from that and go with the general principles because there will be surely a different values which you can be arrived at, which may be much lesser than the values mentioned over here in this uh, uh, notification. And the second aspect is uh, here if you see, uh, you know, uh, value of... Uh, uh, the valuation is given in an exemption notification that is 12 of 17. So the question comes in whether the uh, it is proper for them to set out a mechanism valuation exemption notification for a levy is again a challenge which will be there. So all those are technical, but I don't want to confuse you. Uh, want to just say this is a simply you understand that government wants a tax on each of the transactions in this particular project, at least minimum 5% of the value of the, the each of the apartments, whether it is sold before OC, after OC, by landowner or by developer. So ultimately that is what it boils down to. When you can proceed further, please. Right. So this is a construction service which has been provided. So hence the HSN for this will be double nine five four and earlier we have seen as double nine seven two so the developer is giving to the landowner in the form of constructed apartments units are being shared to the landowner so there is these units which have been given the developer is expected to pay gst again here at the rate of 7.5 percent into two-third or effectively five percent on the value what's the value the value of this is shall be deemed to be the total amount charged for similar apartments. So for these apartments which has been given here, we'll find the similar apartment to of the project to the independent buyers. It shouldn't be a related party of the landowner or the developer to the independent buyer on the nearest date on which the TDR is transferred. So basically JDA date to the nearest date whatever is the value which is sold to the independent buyer, deduct the value of the land as prescribed in paragraph two, which is one third. So 7.5% into two third is what you will be paying tax on, which is the effective rate of taxation, which is supply B. Moving on to the next supply, which is supply C. So the landowner has now received the apartments now, these apartments are uh, sold to the end customers. Well, one, sorry, point, that? Made one point, the previous slide, yeah. the notification number should be 11, not 12. Correct, correct, correct. So please uh, make a correction for audience. It is not 12, it is 11. Yeah, this is an explanation. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That. Sorry, man. Yeah. So now is the supply uh, C, where the constructed units which have been received by the landowner, he is selling to the end customers. He is selling to the end customers. So when these units are sold, the landowner which has received and these units are sold to the end customer, now landowner is liable to pay tax here landowner is liable to pay tax here because this is like kind of becoming trading. However, again, only the sales before OC. The moment if a unit is sold after OC, it is entry five of schedule three, no GST because it's outside the purview of the levy. But the units received from the builder and sold before OC, landowner has to again pay tax. So landowner also has to pay tax at the rate of 5%. 
land owner also has to pay tax at the rate of 5%, which is again 7 and a half into 2 thirds. However, you may say that isn't it double tax? Here, the con for the construction services, whatever is billed by the developer to landowner, the landowner can avail the ITC. ITC can be availed here. After utilizing this ITC for the units which have been sold, if there are some unsold units and that are left as on the date of OC, this needs to be charged off. This needs to be removed from the electronic credit ledger. This is the taxation for the landowner perspective. Lastly, this ITC, when it is being availed, there is a condition. In the fourth proviso to the entry, the condition here is the landowner promoter he is eligible for credit of taxes charged by him, provided the landowner supplies to his buyers at a value higher than the whatever is the value that has been received. That means if I have received an ITC of 100, my outward should be say 101, that one rupee I should be paying it in cash. This is the only thing. Second thing, a uh, landowner cannot avail any ITC which he is accruing on his own account. Let's say landowner is uh, hiring a marketing consultant, hiring a, another uh, professionals uh, to uh, engage anything. Those ITC is also not eligible for the landowner. He should not utilize the ITC. FAQ has been given by the CBIC on this. The last leg of the supply here is the supply D where the sales are made by the builder to the end customer. So out of this supplies, we are now talking about the supply D, the last leg. So for the supply D, which is the last leg, the liability is pretty simple. Entire collections, 5% has to be paid. Now, landowner cannot avail ITC other than the construction services. Here, the builder cannot avail ITC in any form. Let's say builder has one more vertical. He has a vertical of trade of steel, cement, and other things. There is an ITC in for that business. Can he use that ITC to pay this 5%? Again, the answer is no. This 5% has to be paid in cash, and it cannot be paid in ITC. This you by utilizing the input tax credit. This is the point one has to be uh, keeping in mind. I would uh, go to the practical aspect of it, demo of uh, the product, unless uh, you have when, something. When, when I will have a couple of points to just. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. You know, uh, in the trade, I think uh, at least uh, eight out of 10 consultation I do have in this uh, context of uh, real estate. The question which comes in or the confusion which lies is as a developer, I have already paid a tax on the development right. Why are you asking me to pay tax again? So they, what I mean to say, this I mean, I exactly told the wordings what they say, but there's a two liability on the developer. One is only which, what I'm talking about relating to the landowner area. Okay, I'm, what I'm talking about is only relating to landowner area. The generally, there is a two liability on the developer in these transactions, one on a forward charge basis, one on a RCM basis. So generally they get confused. No, no, I have paid taxes on all the flats which I have given to the landowner. So that being a case, you're asking me again to pay tax on the unsold area. Why is it? I already paid a tax. So this is the confusion which generally they uh, come out with. So we have to be very clear that one is for the construction service. Another is it's actually a liability of the landowner which the government has asked me to pay an RCM. So there will be a two two liabilities, no doubt, but it has to be paid. So we have to be very clear when we either if you are a uh, you know a client, I mean developer by yourself, please check on these aspects. They are too independent. Second thing, which is connected to this, sir, uh, can we collect this GST from the landowner? So again, here, the majority of the agreements or the JDAs will not have a clarity as to who has to bear the 
tax implication on this construction services or the this uh, uh, development rights what will be generally discussed there is the liability on the supply b and c they will it will not be speaking about supply a and b at all so generally that is where the dispute comes between the parties who has to pay this who has to bear this tax liability so when you are actually drafting or entering into joint development agreement our suggestion would be make this four aspects separately in the agreement in the clauses give a clear understanding of the tax treatment in each of these four aspects and if liability comes who has to bear each of these taxes has to be clearly mentioned in the joint development agreement which actually the liability in transaction a transaction b and uh, transaction d is on the developer to pay to government whereas in case of transaction the supply c the liability to pay to government is on the land owner so what is to be paid to government is different who has to bear that incidence is different so that should not be getting confused second uh, uh, one more aspect connected to uh, this is that uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, it is generally when it is the marketing of the flats belonging to the land owner is also given to the developer generally what is done is the developer will collect taxes on the land owner's flats also and pay to government in whose name in their own name so that would it effectively discharge the liability of the land owner on the supply c my answer is no so the levy on supply c has to be discharged by the land owner after taking registration in their name and they have to assess themselves and pay tax merely by the fact on the entire flats the developer has paid a tax on the, and giving the money net of the taxes to the land owner i think i think maybe uh, we'll have a issue please be careful about it. i think these are some of the points i thought would be important for you all to know okay over to you when please continue i think there's some questions yes. we'll answer after the exam uh, example which we ex when we'll explain easily yeah so again feel free to ask any questions uh i'll take up a simple example of course in the real life uh, there would be some complications that would might come up so we can address all the issues let me take up the Excel. All right. So here is a simple Excel where we are understanding the transaction in the following way. Hope the screen is visible. So PPT is only being visible. PPT is visible. Visible now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Now it's visible. All right. Okay, so we have taken a situation. Look at the facts of the case. Uh, here is the facts of the case. Uh, landowner is getting 39%. Landowner is getting 39%. Builder is getting 61%. So the total, it is 100 so we are assuming there are 100 apartments. Each apartment has 1,000 square feet. On the date of JD, so it is 10,000 rupees per square feet. That means each apartment is 1 crore. And on the date of OC, it has appreciated. It is at 11,000 uh, rupees per square feet. So that means it is 1.1 crore per unit that is being sold. During the period that the landowners or developers would have sold, let's say that average all the units got sold at 10,500, which is 105 for all the units that are sold. So the landowner got 33 units before OC, so totally 39 units. So he has sold 33 before OC. He has retained some six with him. 
and builder out of 61 units, he could sell 52 units before the OC and nine were unsold. Right? This is the example. These are the facts of the case. Any question to uh, anyone here on the facts? Uh, if you have a question, put it as put your question. If no question, put it as no so that I understand because this is the premise at which we will be building, looking at all the taxation. Is the example clear? Or do you want me to repeat? Yeah. Uh, okay. What is OC? OC is the occupancy certificate, completion certificate. So project is complete. That is what the OC means. Uh, if the example is clear, I request the members to put as yes in the chat so that I know I can, uh, because this is the uh, uh, virtual session, very difficult I, for me to know how the participants are. All right. JD date is the commencement of project. Not uh, exactly, but uh, you can take as the commencement of the project. All right. So I think for majority example is clear. Now let us go. If we look at back here in the screen, we have four supplies. We have four supplies where landowner has supplied the development rights. The landowner has supplied the supply A, the development rights. Let's look at the taxation of the development right. So what did the landowner give? He has given the development rights. So in lieu of giving the development right, what did the landowner get? Let's say the landowner got 39 units. Here we are seeing 39 units and a goodwill, non-refundable deposit of one crore. So totally the, the value of the development rights is 40 crores. The value of development rights is 40 crores. GST on this development rights is 18%. We have seen the first double nine seven two. Notification 11, entry 16, it is 18%. So 18% of 40 crores is 7 crore 20 lakhs. Going back here. You know, uh, you can just show the explanation for valuation of... The yes, I am so going to... Yes, goodwill, goodwill aspect they want. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. Uh, so the... I actually also have some levers just to say that how... So the area share, owner size share, I've put it as 40 crores and uh, uh, goodwill has been given as one crore. Uh, so uh, balance uh, 39 has been given as by way of flats. I will come back and we will change it, the numbers later. Yeah, so there is, assuming there is a goodwill also has been given one crore, okay. So here, when we go back into the explanation, it says the value of the development right where the consideration is in the form of residential apartments. Consideration is in the form of residential apartment. Then it would be deemed to be value of those apartments. So the value of the, those apartments is what I have to value. So now, how did I get 40 crores? Because 39 units have been given. So the similar date on the date of joint development, value of each unit is 1 crore. The value of each unit is this divided by 10 raised to 7. So value of each unit is 1 crore, right? So on the date, each unit is 1 crore. So 39 units have become 39 crores. Goodwill has been given 1 crore. So the development right value is 40 crores. Now, taxation of 40 crores, 18% on this is 7.2 crores. Now, the exemption is 100% residential portion, which is 7.2 crores. So 7.2 crores is exempted supply here. We are saying that the entire thing is residential. Hence, entire thing is exempted. But however, there is a condition to exemption. The condition is, what was the condition given? So the, the, the first one we are seeing is the exemption. So the exemption is to the extent of residential portion. But there is a condition given 
to this exemption. The condition that they have given is provided the developer is paying the carpet area of unbooked on the date of OC. Now here we have taken an example saying that out of 50, 61 units, the builder did not sell nine units. Builder has not sold nine units. So these nine units are unbooked. These nine units are unbooked. That means my 7.2 crores, I have to proportionately allocate to those nine units. So if you have seen the formula, so the 7.2 crores is multiplied with nine units over the total number of units in the uh, apartment. And there are 100 units. So it is 7.2, sorry, it is 7.2 into 9 divided by 100 is 64,80,000. However, we also have another condition here, subject to a maximum of value of unsold units. So the what is the value of unsold units? The value of the unsold units on the date of OC, these 9 units, has to be valued at 1.1 crores. Value has, it has to be valued at 1.1 crores. And 5% of it yields to 49,50,000. So the development right taxes, which has to be paid by the builder, which has to be paid by the builder under RCM, is 49,50,000. Now, out of the whole things, if you see, the supply A, it's a supply A. So we have seen the RCM on the development right, which is payable 49,50,000. We understood this mechanism. Any doubts to anyone before I move to supply B? So with this example, the development right RCM is 49,50,000. For okay. supply one, which is question the question about uh, what is the time? This is time of valuation. So the time of valuation is the JD date. The nearest value of the similar unit uh, sold to an independent buyer nearest to the JD date. When I have to pay, I have to pay it on OC date. But the value of the supply is valued based on the JD date. Uh, Srijit is asking for OC unsold. Why did we ignore the landowner unsold? Now look at the unbooked units. Can a builder book the units of the landowner? Like assuming I am the builder and the customer is coming to me. He is asking me, I want to buy units. I can only give him units whatever I have. I can't give him a unit which is of landowner which I have sold it off. So the unbooked units unbooked with the builder as on the OC date. All right. So if the development rate taxation is clear, just put it in the chat as clear or yes. So that I'll move to the next one. Perfect. There's only one yes. More yeses would also give. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Now let's move to the second aspect of the transaction where Supply of construction services. The supply B, the supply second supply, where the construction services have been given by the builder to the landowner. The construction services which has given by the builder to the landowner. Now, the value of the barter which is given. So the number of units given by the builder to the landowner, 39 units he has given. Value of 39 units is 39 crores. Now, one third deduction is there. Like if you see the valuation here for the supply B, the valuation which has been given construction services is less the value of the transfer of land, which is described in paragraph B. So that means one third, which is deemed towards uh, construction uh, towards land is deducted. So out of 39 crores, 13 crores is deducted. 26 crores is the value of the construction services rate of tax one and a half percent. So the GST on construction services given by the developer to the landowner is 1 crore 95 lakhs. Is this clear to everyone? Anyone has any doubt here?
All right. So we have now looked at the second one, which is supply of construction services, 1 crore 95 lakhs also is answered. Now, here in our example, we have taken that the out of the 39 units, the landowner has received 33 units sold before OC. Out of 39 units received, landowner has sold 33 units before the OC. He still have six units unsold. Let us say these 33 units are all sold at an average price of 105. Now let's look at the supply three, which is the landowner. So the number of units which have been sold before OC is 33. The value of 33 is 33 into 105, which is 34 crore 65 lakhs. So the landowner has to pay a GST of again into two third into seven and a half percent. So effectively it is five percent, which comes to one crore 73 lakhs. 25,000 is the liability of the landowner to pay to the government. However, landowner is eligible for input tax credit. So we have again seen here in the explanation C, the landowner promoter shall be eligible for credit of taxes provided he charges to the end buyers at a value higher than the value which is received by him. So here in this case, he received at 1 crore, he's selling it at 105. So his liability is 1 crore 73, of which out of the total ITC he has received, how much ITC he has received? He has received by way of construction services, by way of construction services, he has received 1 crore 95. If you see by way of construction services, he received 1 crore 95. Out of 1 crore 95, he can utilize only 1 crore 65. Just because he has 1 crore 73 liability, he cannot use the entire 1 crore 95 or 1 crore 73. He can use only 1 crore 65, balance 8 lakh 25,000. So basically, it is that 50 lakhs into the 33 units at 50%. So if I have to set tell, he made each unit has been sold at 1 crore 5 lakhs. So 5 lakhs into 33 units into 5% is your 8 lakh 25,000 rupees. That is the value on, on which the landowner will be paying to the government, which is supply C sale to the end customer. Is the supply C clear? Anyone, any doubts? Sale by the landowner, is, this, is it clear? Sir, explain ITC available to use by landowner. Explain that one more time, sir. Yeah, so the ITC, the total ITC received by the landowner for this is, if you look at it, the construction services supply, we have told in the construction services supply, we said the liability to the developer is 1 crore 95 lakhs. So 1 crore 95 lakhs, developer is paying to the government on behalf of the landowner. Landowner in his electronic credit ledger, he is now taking a credit of 1 crore 95. But the entire 1 crore 95, he cannot use it. 1 crore 95 belongs to all 39 units. He sold only 33 units. So that 1 crore 95 attributable to 33 units is 1 crore 73, sorry, 1 crore 65, 1 crore 90 into 33 divided by 39. So he is eligible only per crore 65 lakhs as his in ITC balance he will be paying in cash. Is that clear, sir? Yes, sir. All right. Got it. So now we will be moving to the last item, which is supply for pretty simple. So here again, the builder to the end customers, he has sold 52 units. He has sold 52 units. So the value of that sale is 50 crore 60. So for the 52 units, 50 crore 60, he will be paying GST of 2 crore 73. This is supply four. The land or the builder uh, balance units he sold before OC is 52. So he will be paying 5% on that 2 crore 73 is what he will be paying. So are we clear with supply four, the taxation? Everyone are clear with it, any doubts? Is it clear? If yes, put it as yes in the chat. Perfect. 
Now, if you look at it, the landowner has received 1 crore 95 from the developer, the valuation of construction services and the tax thereon, of which he has used 1 crore 65 for paying GST on the units he sold before OC. That means landowner has to reverse the ITC under Rule 42. The balance uh, which is uh, available with him, it would be lapsed. So 1 crore 95 by minus 1 crore 65, 30 lakhs would be lapsed. Is this clear for everyone? ITC reversal, is it clear? All right. Done. So if I have to summarize, if I have to summarize, now whole of it, let me just zoom down. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So can you please explain exemption part of supply one again, sir? There's no exemption. Which is the exemption part you're saying? Supply one, sir. Okay, supply RCM, one. RCM, yeah, RCM. Okay, RCM. Okay, okay, all right. So in the supply one, uh, if you look at it, the value of the units that have been given in barter, 39 units have come to the landowner. That means value of development right is 39 crores. Now, GST applicable on 39 crores is 7.2 crores. Entire 7.2 crores ideally is payable on river. Firstly, development right is reverse charge. But the government has said, the development right of reverse charge is exempt to the extent of residential portion. Now, the residential portion is 7.2 crores. It is exempt to the extent of residential portion provided they have given a condition to that exemption. The 7.2 crores is exempted provided the developer pays the unsold units. So the 7.2 crores, the development right is now allocated to all the units. So the government said the unsold units. Now, unsold units on the OC date is 9. So the development right attributable to the unsold units is paid by the builder. The exemption would hold good. Now, how much is the development right which he has to pay for unsold unit is 64,80,000. Alongside of saying this exemption, they have also said that this 64,80,000 is subject to a maximum of GST otherwise payable on these unsold units if they have been sold. Now, if they have been sold, that means if 13, if the this 9 crores, 9 units which have been sold on the OC debt, which is 9 into 1.1, right? So 9.9 .9 crores, if it is sold on the OC date, 5% GST on it would be 49,50,000. So the development right taxation is lower of 1 and 2. Is that clear, sir, now? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. So now, if I have to summarize, if I have to summarize, so for the ease of it, I'll just... Uh, All right. So now only look at the top portion of the screen. Let me just uh, edit for the, Yeah. So now this is the summary of whole of the transactions. This is the summary of whole of the transactions. So for this 100 units, we have taken an assumption. We have taken an assumption that 40% is the landowner share. 40 percent is a landowner share here they have we have given him goodwill of one crore uh, so that means uh, 40 crores one crore goodwill and uh, 39 crores 39 units which is given one percent for this this is the taxation that has occurred what is the money that government has collected five crore 27 lakh 25 lakh 75 thousand rupees people may think that okay if I increase my value of goodwill, change in, I will convert into revenue share. Will it change all these things? We can just, we have simple levers to uh, do it. Let's say instead of one crore, I am now giving three crore goodwill. Can you see, can you look at it, the value of the things? There is not much change that is happening. Now, 
is like if these numbers are like more or less you are seeing it the same. How is this happening? We'll look at one by one. Let's say if I give a goodwill of two, right? What will happen? My number of units given is 38 crores. My construction service, my construction service is coming down. Value of my construction service is coming down. If you look at it, this is just that is changing, but your end is not changing. But if I, how will my RCM on development rate change? If the number of units on the date of OC unsold is less. Right now, I've taken 85% is sold, 15% unsold. If I increase my percentage sold, let's say I will make it as 90%. Can you see the development rate taxation is coming down? I will make it to 95%. I make it to 100%. My development rate taxation has gone. If you look at it, but look at the end, the value J12, it is still 5 lakh 12. So end customers I have sold, so the taxation of that end customers is coming. So just to, if I have to give you a simple numbers for this, let me just take those numbers here. So the sale to end customer before OC is this, and the supply of construction service to the landowner is this and the value of the development right is this unit and the total units on which the tax government has received the tax is 100 units. Now we can change the numbers again and see if it is uh, taxation of 100 units are happening or not. Now sold before OC, let's say I'll make it only Wait, 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 okay. just make the increase that goodwill at this point in time. Yeah, yeah no problem. Even if I increase, uh, even if I increase goodwill, right? If you see, my value of construction service is getting changed. No, uh, I think uh, one aspect over here, uh, you assume that the value of uh, goodwill plus the number of flat will be equal to 30%. Equal to? 40%. Yeah, correct. Value of goodwill plus uh, number of units. Correct. Is 40%. You no, know, generally, practically, what happens when you know, uh, the area sharing percentage will be fixed to 40 or 60. Additionally, there will be a goodwill. Sir, agreed. It will be like in, treat this as 38% plus 2 crores goodwill. So, uh, Eventually, we are uh, we are just making it a number. It's, it's it, just a number. It. But you can proceed, proceed. Yeah. So now if you look at it, the taxation of 100 units have happened. Let's say if I am not able to sell 100 units before OC, and I will let me change this, that I have only sold 90% before OC. What will happen? I have sold 56 units before OC. 38 units have given by way of construction service. Six, the development rate taxation is kicking in. Still, you are paying 100 units and what government is getting is still 5 crore 25. See, you can see the numbers are changing. So the with the transaction, it is moving from one bucket to other bucket. Like when I make my goodwill to 1 crore, my with the change in, if you look at it, this value, this is any of is computed value. Okay, this is the computed value. Even if I look and make it to two crores, then between the construction service and the sale to end customer, the taxation gets changed, uh, interchange happens, but the government is going to get the same thing in any way. Even if I make this as 100% sold before OC, government will still get that 5 crore 25 in a different form. So the taxation to the government doesn't really change of course, maybe the marginally it changes because some rate, some units are OC date, some units are uh, uh, average rate. Just because of that, that's a getting change. If I put everything at uh, uh, at the ten thousand rupees, hardly there would be any change. With any change in the levers, you can see the value of the tax is going to be the same way. This is how, in a simple way, one can understand the taxation on the uh, joint development agreement.
All right. So these are the various things. I think we have seen the demo of it. Now, if there are any questions, uh, we are open to take up the questions. So, uh, Venu, uh, before the questions, yes, sir. I think you need to explain about that, you know, the time when the uh, uh, developer has to charge the GST to the landowner so that they can get a credit. The timing of the charging and timing of a credit, because if first they pay, subsequently if they get a credit is of no use. So that yeah. aspect I think you need to explain. Yeah, so also with, when we said the uh, landowner gets an input tax credit of the units that have been uh, given by the developer to the landowner by way of construction service, the time to pay the taxation of development right, the time to pay the taxation of construction services is on the OC debt. Since the landowner is now selling those units, technically landowner cannot sell unless he got something, right? So since he is selling something and he is liable to pay tax on it, they need to have an arrangement such a way that the construction services invoiced and because the time of supply uh, section 13 read with 31 permits you to pay tax uh, uh, say, or mandates you to pay the tax earliest of invoice the service received and uh, uh, the way it is accounted, right? So uh, the landowner will be getting input tax credit in early if he is selling any of these units. So between both of these uh, parties, they can enter into an agreement to issue the invoices in early only. Yes, sir. Someone was asking a question. So for example, like builder and landowner will be in a mutual understanding. Like builder will tell for landowner, like till OC you don't sell your flats, First, the landowner, the first builder will sell the flats. After that, landowner will give chance to sell. That will be understood, sir. Like what I'm telling. No, you, you. I understood what you're telling, but what, what's your question? Yeah, like again, the landowner, uh, the builder should pay the tax, and, uh, and after that, landowner should pay, sir. Like how would is. Sir, in the whole of the diagram, there are multiple supplies. You are now asking about what supply? I'm um, asking, uh, you told the first landowner sell before OC. Uh, yeah, you are telling, right? Mm -hmm. okay, so that like I am telling, if builder and the landowner get like a mutual understanding, like builder will tell to landowner that, sir, you don't sell before uh, we sell the flats. Mm -hmm. Like after OC comes, you start selling, we'll tell for the landowner. Okay. Like after that, like after we sell, we need to pay tax to government, right? Like GST. After say, OC who, or before OC, you need to pay. When you say we, who is we? And like the builder, builder. I'm talking from builder side. Okay. I'll, uh, in, the, in this example, we have said 32 units, the landowner has sold before OC. I'll just make this as zero. All right. Okay. Look at yeah. it. I'm just making this as zero. Now enter uh, rule 140, uh, the rule 40. So this, which I have to reverse. So you can just see that is becoming 1 crore 90. I have to reverse. So the tax that the builder has to pay has got nothing to do with this. So we, Rajasar has said, in case if the landowner is selling in advance, between builder and landowner can have an arrangement because landowner will be paying that much money to the builder to bill in in advance. But forget about those things. Get understand with the numbers. Uh, the underlying the nitty gritties uh, we can discuss later. Is the, the how to compute? I want you to get clarity on. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Sundesh, you are asking, can you reduce sale before OC to zero? That's what we've just done. Even if you reduce to zero, you can see there's a liability that is coming. Okay. Tina, explain the goodwill. Goodwill, you can make it as zero. Like in this example, uh, I can just make the goodwill as zero. These are, uh, the numbers are given just to say 
how much ever you try, you want to make it, it won't really impact. Now, here I am saying 38 units and goodwill 2 crores. Let me make 0, right? Goodwill is 0. 40 units and goodwill is 0. Still, if you can see, 5 crore 25 is coming. So, there is a change in the some or the other construction service goes up and uh, accordingly the taxation is changing, right? So, uh, goodwill is just a function. Do GST attract if it's sold before OC, but consideration received after OC? Srijit, uh, there is nothing called sold before OC, consideration received after OC. Now, what is the sale? It is sale agreement that you are making and you are receiving token money. If you are receiving single rupee token money also, it is like you have sold before OC, right? My receipt of consideration could be anything. You cannot say that uh, if I will pay GST only when customer is paying. No, that is not the intent of the law. The time of supply attracts when the supply is given. With the moment your uh, OC is received, so you are agreed to complete the project has been done. So builder has to pay GST or on that date. Where is the supply of unsold apartment? So there is no levy of uh, 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 GST on unsold apartment. I, I want everyone to get that unsold units GST is not levied. It's only development right indirectly taxed. All right, I think we have answered all the questions. If any question is unanswered, you can unmute yourself and uh, talk. Otherwise, uh, over to Vishwas. Raji, sir, anything to be added? Ashika is also here. Ashika, is there anything to be added that we missed? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. 